Hi guys, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So I'm back with the morning tales for February 11, 2021, and I hope that I don't need to tell you this thing. How this series, how much this series is important for your examination. So do not miss out any video that I'm uploading for your current affairs, as this is an integral part of RBI Grade B examination, especially for the phase one where current affairs has. 80 questions so 80 questions is a big number and do not miss out the current affairs that I provide in the morning days as well as in spotlight magazine and guys if you are coming here for the first time then subscribe to our channel and hit this bell notification also guys do share this video with your friends so that they can also get enlightened with the news and they can also crack the examination. Here, this is the telegram group which you can join if you want to ask any query related to the examination or if you want to get yourself updated about the new updates of the exam, then you can join this group. The link is in description below. And here, this is our crash course that we offer for 2020 uh, to 2021 RBI Grade B examination. So, if you have not prepared till now for the examination, then you can buy this course uh, by using this crash. 40 coupon code which will entail you a 40% discount on this course after which the amount of this course will be around 9000. So if you want to prepare for RBI grade B and if you want to give it a chance then do buy this course it will help you in covering the entire syllabus in a very concise manner. Now let's begin our current affairs for the first with this first question. So we have the first question, which of the following is the proposed 51st Tiger Reserve of India? So as I repeatedly say this thing, national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, tiger reserves, biosphere reserves, and then we have the rivers, lakes, and all these things which comprise your static GK, static GK portion are very important, especially when they are in the news. And this is the current news only that the 51st tiger reserve of india has been approved by the central government now which one is it and in which state is it located so these are questions that are coming up in your mind right now so i hope that i have guessed it right so don't worry guys i will be telling you the answers of these questions but let's find out the answer of this question first that what is the name of the 51st tiger reserve of india so we have Shri Viliputhur Mega Malai Tiger Reserve, Kalar Munda Mundan Thurai Tiger Reserve, then Satya Mangalam Tiger Reserve, Muddu Malai and Anna Malai Tiger Reserve. Which one is the right answer? The right answer is option A. Shri Viliputhur Mega Malai is the 51st proposed Tiger Reserve of India and the fifth. Tiger Reserve of Tamil Nadu. So it is located in Tamil Nadu. Now I said that it's the fifth Tiger Reserve of Tamil Nadu. Then which one are the preceding or the existing Tiger Reserves? So all the four Tiger Reserves are right in front of your eyes in the options. So these are the remaining four Tiger Reserves of the Tamil Nadu state. And these are the total five Tiger Reserves that this state has. That's all for this question. Now my question from you is the CM and Governor of Tamil Nadu. Next question. Which company has signed two separate MOU with Indian Institute of Science and Central Manufacturing Technology Institute to set up first of its kind digital transformation labs in uh, Bangalore? First of all, let me clarify that one MOU has been signed with Indian Institute of Science and one is with the Central Manufacturing Technology Institute. So there is one one MOU that has been signed by the by a company from the option. So which company is it? We have Wipro, Intel, IBM, Simons and Amazon Web Services. Which one is the right answer? The right answer is option D, Simons. So these three organizations have signed this MOU to set up this first of its kind digital transformation labs in Bangalore. What is the purpose? Why are they setting up this lab? 
the basic purpose is to is the enhancement of knowledge of the students and faculty in digital technologies specifically for the msmes in the manufacturing sector the name itself that is the digital transformation tech lab is itself signifying the purpose of this lab that is to train the faculties the students as well as the industry entrepreneurs who want to get themselves trained in the digital technologies this lab uh will train them and they uh, and in turn they can uh, they can produce innovative solutions for the msmes in manufacturing sector now the things that you have to remember here is the place do not miss out the place where this lab is going to be established and the other thing that you have to remember is the organization so that's all for this question now we are moving on to our third question with which company has ministry of defense signed a contract for procurement of software defined radio tactical short form as sdr tac worth 1 crore 1000 crore now i think that you have got a little puzzled don't worry guys what this technology is that i will elaborate but first let's discuss the answer of this question so that the sync can be maintained so we have kalyani rafael advanced systems bharat electronics limited mahindra defense system ordnance factory board and tata advanced systems what is the right answer the right answer is option b it's bharat electronics limited with which this contract Uh, worth one thousand crore has been signed by the Ministry of Defence for procurement of software defined radio uh, technical. Now, what is this? This is basically a communication system used by Indian Navy. That's all. That's the basic. Um, that's the basic purpose of this system that Ministry of Defence is procuring for Indian Navy from India from Bharat. electronics limited guys if you look out for other sources like pib and uh, any other official newspaper then you would find the technical things related to this system which you are not in required to remember so just remember this thing that the basic purpose is for is the communication uh, facilitation of communication by the indian navy so that's the whole purpose of this system now the other thing related to this system is that it has been developed by drdo in collaboration with a consortium of various companies and the, uh, those companies also include this bharat electronics limited so that's all for this question i hope that i'm clear to you if there is any doubt then please feel free to ask me in the comment section below or you can also ask me on the telegram channel that i mentioned in the beginning of this video next uh when wo where was the yudh abhyas 2021 exercise conducted so basically uh with which country does india conduct this yudh abhyas uh, exercise it's with us so this is india and us and what is the edition of this exercise it's 16th edition in the year 2021 now you have to tell the place where was this exercise held or i should say that where is it being held because it is going to end on february 21 now we have rajasthan andhra pradesh odisha madhya pradesh and telangana in the options which one is the right answer the right answer is rajasthan yudh abhyas 2021 the exercise between india and us is taking place in rajasthan so that's all for this question but my question from you is remaining and that question i hope that you have guessed it the other exercises that india conduct with us so that you have to tell me the name of all the military exercises that india conduct with us in the comment section below so next question is with which indian institute has drdo signed an mou for conduct creating jatp center of excellence so we have indian institute of science indian institute of science education and research 
National Academy of Defense Production Center for the Study of Developing Societies and Institute of Defense Studies and Analysis. Which one is the right answer? The right answer is option A. Indian Institute of Science which is located in Bangalore. Now what is this JATP Center of Excellence? First of all JATP stands for Joint Joint Advanced Technology Program. So under this program basically DRDO collaborates with research institutes to innovate on the new technologies, especially the technologies in the critical sectors of defense like uh, artificial intelligence and uh, missiles. So in order to develop new technologies in the critical sectors, DRDO collaborates with other institutes under this joint advanced technology program. Now this program was launched in the year 1983 by Abdul Kalam, APJ Abdul Kalam. Do you guys know that when this program was launched, Abdul Kalam was working on a very important project under which five missiles were developed indigenously. So now my question from you is the name of the mission under which the five indigenous missiles, Prithvi, Trishul, Nag, Agni are developed. So you have to tell me, tell me the name of that project, name of that mission which was uh, in progress in 1983 when this program was launched and basically the program was launched in order to collaborate with the IISC for making the designs of missiles, for making missiles. So that was the initial initiation of this program. Now why is the center of excellence being established? The purpose is to increase the scope of this program and in other words we can also say the purpose is to increase collaboration with other research institutes so that we can develop state of the art technologies in defense sector and in other sectors as well. So that is all for this question and do remember to answer the question that I have asked you in the comment section below. So guys, this is the humongous question of the day as well as the most important question. So you have to listen to me very carefully during the question because I am going to tell you the various details that this report mentions regarding India's energy consumption and India's energy sector. So let's begin this question. As per the IEAs, IEA stands for International Energy Agency. India Energy Outlook 2021, India's oil demand will rise to dash million barrels per day by 2040. So you have 8.7 million, 7, 5.3 to 4.3 million. How much India's oil demand will increase by the year 2040? The right answer is option A, 8.7 million barrels per day. Guys, do you know that how much this is in percentage when you compare it with the present uh, oil demand? It is the increase of 74%. And this is ironically highlighting the efforts of Indian government on renewable energy. That on the one side we are uh, pushing renewable energy so much and on the other side an important agency like International Energy Agency is saying that India is going to increase its oil demand oil consumption by 74% from the present scenario. So this is something that is ironical mentioned by this report and this also reinstates its importance. Therefore you have to remember this fact, the 8.7 million barrels per day and the percentage. Now, as I had told you that I would be discussing with you the details that this report has mentioned. So these are the details and there are nothing much for us to uh, conceptualize to, for us to understand because they are just the basic digits, basic facts that have been mentioned by this report. For example, this report has stated that the 
primary energy demand of India, primary energy consumption will rise to 1,123 million tons and the GDP is expected to increase USD 8.6 trillion by 2040. So this is an important fact that this report highlights. Next, India is India at present is the fourth largest global energy consumer after China, US and European Union. And this report specifically mentions that by the year 2030, India is going to replace European Union and become the third largest energy consumer in the world. So that is the major fact that this report mentions. So India accounts for nearly one quarter of global energy uh, growth from the year 2019 to 40, which is the largest for any country. So this is again an important fact. Prior to the global pandemic, India's energy demand was projected to increase by 50%. But now, since the pandemic has hit the globe, this would be the growth rate, 35%. So earlier it was 50%, but now it is 35%. So guys, here the highlighted portions are the key facts that you have to memorize from this report. Next is oil demand. A five-fold increase in per capita car ownership will lead to oil, in, uh, oil demand increase. The important fact is that India will become the growing, fastest growing market for natural gas by 2040. This is the main fact. India's oil demand will rise by 74% to 8.7 million barrels per day by 2040. India's net dependence on oil imports increases to more than 90% by 2040 from the current 75% as domestic consumption rises much more than production. So this is the most starking fact that this report mentions and do understand this point by keeping the renewable energy push in the back of your mind. Next is natural gas demand. India's natural gas requirement is projected to uh, more than triple to 201 billion cubic meters and coal demand is seen rising to 772 million tons in 2040 from the current 590 million tons. Natural gas import dependence increased from 20% in 2010 to almost 50% in 2019 and it is set to grow 60% in 2040. So these are mere facts that you have to cram in order to clear the examination. This is uh, something that we cannot do anything about. But if you understand the whole scenario, then it will become easier for you to memorize these facts. So now we are on the favorite topic that is the renewable energy. India's share in the growth in renewable energy is the second largest in the world after China. So this shows that the push that the government is throwing towards renewable energy is actually paying off. The efforts are actually paying off because India is the, uh, India is the second largest in terms of growth in renewable energy after China. By 2040, India's power systems um, power system is bigger than that of the European Union and is the world's third largest in terms of electricity generation. It also has 30% more elect, uh, installed renewable energy capacity than the United States. Next, so guys, this is the last slide from that report, India Energy Outlook. So do keep your patience. Okay. Over the last three decades, India accounted for about 10% of the world growth in industrial value added. So total uh, value added in the industrial sector was about 10% over the last three decades. And this is expected to rise uh, to 20% by 2040 in the upcoming two decades. As a consequence of this, India will account for nearly one third of the global industrial energy demand uh, growth to 2040. Basically, this is saying that industrial 
value addition has increased by 10% in the past three decades and it is expected to increase 20% by the year 2040 and because the industry is increasing the energy demanded by the industry is definitely going to increase and it will account for one third of global industrial energy demand growth by 2040. So guys that was all about the India Energy Outlook Report 2021. But my question from you is who is the chief of Indian uh, International Energy Agency? That is your question. Tell me in the comment section below. And if you have any kind of query, then do ask it in the comment section. So guys, here, our next question is about a committee who heads the government panel formed for reviewing the proposed ban on 27 widely used pesticides because of its harmful effects on animals and humans. So in May 2020, The government of India proposed to ban 27 pesticides, but due to the uh, due to the pushback, or we can say due to the protest from the industry, the uh, we can say that this ban has not been imposed till now, and this committee has been formed by the government of India to review the ban on the 27 pesticides. So here, the number that you have to remember is 27, a total number of 27 pesticides. Who is going to chair this committee? It is T.P. Rajendran. That's all for this question. There is nothing much for us to discuss. And this is the last question of the day. So we have whose memoir is titled as Beautiful Things. So the right answer is Hunter Biden. And he is the son of Joe Biden, the President of United States. Therefore, this book is very important. Beautiful things is about his struggle with addiction and that is something that you should not remember at all from the exam point of view. Just remember Hunter Biden is the uh, author of this memoir and he is the son of Joe Biden. That's all for this question and that's all for today's session. I hope that you have enjoyed and learnt a lot during the session and if you have then do share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching the session.